I'm Anil Kumar and this video is for grade 12 students doing advanced functions or preparing for calculus. So it's prerequisite for calculus also. We'll now consider application of rate of change and we'll figure out whether a given point is a maximum or a minimum. Question is, verify that the point given for the function is either a maximum or a minimum. Explain your strategy function is f of x equals to x cube minus 3x and the point given is minus 1, 2. Now I'll give you a couple of strategies and that could be base for you to answer similar questions, right? Now first let me give you the most difficult one and then we can look into the easy options. Okay, so the difficult one is using difference quotient method. So whenever we want to find uh, instantaneous rate of change, we can always find difference quotient. For a maximum or a minimum, uh, the slope should be zero, right? So we will use, we'll try to find instantaneous rate of change for this function at a general point. Let us say the general point is A. So we can say that that should be f of A plus H minus f of a over h, right? That is a plus h minus a gives us h. Now for the given function which is x cubed minus 3x, let me substitute the value a and a plus h for x. So we get the first term will be a plus h whole cube minus 3 times a plus h that is f of a plus h minus f of a which is a cube minus 3a over h. Now let us expand a plus h whole cube. So I hope you remember the formula. It is a cube plus 3a square h plus 3a square h plus h cube. You can always use Pascal's triangle and figure it out, right? So let me expand this, which is a cube plus 3 times a square h plus 3 times a h square plus h cube minus, let's open this bracket, minus 3a minus 3h. Let's put it in brackets. Minus, we have a cube minus 3a divided by h. Now, since you know H is, we are trying to figure out instantaneous rate of change, right? So we know that H is very, very small as compared to 1. And therefore, H square or H cube should be approaching 0, right? So we can neglect the terms which have H square or H cube in them, correct? So we'll neglect these terms. They are approximately 0. Since they are approaching 0, we are going to neglect them. And always in difference quotient, you must have noticed by now that these terms cancel out. So let's figure out. Well, we do have 3a. And where is 3a? Minus 3. Correct? That leads to a very simple, simplified form of difference quotient. So we have 3a square h. And then this is approximately 0. This is approximately 0 minus 3h divided by h. So that is what we get. Now we can factor out h, so cancelling h, we get 3a square minus 3. So instantaneous rate of change for the given function at any point a is 3a square minus 3. Now what is it at minus 1? Let's figure it out. So if, if a equals to minus 1, then, then instantaneous rate of change is going to be 3 times minus 1 square minus 3. Now that is 3 minus 3 and it is equals to 0. Since instantaneous rate of change is 0, that means we have a horizontal tangent, right? Horizontal tangent at a point implies that we have either a maximum 
or a minimum, right? So, so we know that at minus 1, we do have a maximum or a minimum. You will also note that even at a equals to 1, this will be 0. So we have actually maximum minimum at both plus and minus 1, right? Now the idea is how to prove that this is either maximum or minimum. That is the question which we need to figure out, right? So we have shown that this is either maximum or minimum, right? So I'm using this space now to show you that part and like these are different strategies. So we started with strategy 1 and that is we applied our rule which is difference quotient and found. Now what you should do is to find whether it is maximum or minimum what we can do is we have selected a point minus 1 right so we can also select a point which is on the left side of minus 1 and on the right side of minus 1. So what I'm trying to say here is that we know instantaneous rate of change is 0 at minus 1 right so so we have considered that at minus 1, so let's say this is minus 1, instantaneous rate of change is 0. So if I consider a point to the left side, which will be minus 1.01, for example, and on the right side, it could be minus 0 0.99, correct? So if I use these two values, what do I get? So that means at x equals 2, or I can write a equals 2, minus 1.01 .01, what is the value so we'll have this square three times this which is a bigger value minus 3 correct so we'll find out how much it is and then we'll also calculate for 0.99 square right and see what it is so if you calculate this value it is going to be this so so the instantaneous rate of change will be if I calculate here it is going to be 3 times 1.01 .01. so it is 3 times minus 1.01 square minus 1 right now this number is positive and greater than 3 so we will have a positive value correct so on this side we have a positive tangent that means tangent is kind of like this do you see that now if I substitute for x equals to minus 0 0.99 then what is the instantaneous rate of change so we are trying to find instantaneous rate of change on either side of minus 1 so if I write minus 0 0.99 square minus 1 this is less than 1 right so this number 3 times anything less than 1 will be less than 3 so we get a negative value so on this side it will be negative value if rate of change changes from positive to negative, what do you expect? You expect a maximum, right? So that is one way of proving it, correct? Now let us do method number two. Method number two is actually very simple. That is, let us find the value of the function at both these points. So a point on the left side of minus 1 is minus 1.01, .01, right? Let's find the value. It is minus 1.01 .01 whole cube minus 3 times minus 1.01. .01. It is equals to how much? Let's use calculator, right? So it says within brackets minus 1.01 .01 whole cube minus 3 times minus 1.01 .01. it gives us 1.999 okay now let us calculate we already know that the value at minus 1 is 2 right let's calculate the value at point which is on the right side which is minus 0 0.99 so we get minus 0 0.99 q minus 3 times minus 0 0.99 how much is that okay within brackets minus 0.99 q take away 3 times minus 0.99 it gives us again 1.999 the same value 1.999 so what do we observe we observe that in this particular function 
points very close to minus 1 have a lower value than minus 1. Since they have a lower value, this is a maximum. Do you see that? That is one way of doing it. Now, from here, you can also do rate of change. That is to say, we know the values now, right? So you can find the rate of change between the point on the left, right? So that is to say, we'll do f of minus 1, take away f of minus 1.01 .01 divided by minus 1, take away minus 1.01, .01, right? So if you do that, what do you get? So on the left side, minus 1 is 2, 2 minus 1 is positive, correct? So we get a positive value, right? On the other hand, if you do the right side, which is f of minus 0 0.99, take away f of minus 1, divided by minus 0 0.99, take away minus 1. Now, since this value is smaller than 2, right, you get a negative slope here. So we get a negative slope. So slope or the tangent is positive slope, and here the instantaneous is negative and therefore this value which is higher than both these should be maximum so that's another way of doing the same thing right and at times if you are good at graphing you can even sketch this function so I can write down f of x as equal to x cube minus 3x let me factor x and we have x square minus 3 which I can factor as x times x plus square root 3 times x minus square root 3 correct so that gives me a graph correct so this graph will be kind of let me sketch a small graph here okay let me use some pen okay so we have three zeros one at zero the other one is minus square root 3 which is 1.7 the other one is at plus square root 3, correct? So we have a graph which is kind of like this. The graph will be like this since positive leading coefficient and you know you can plug in the values. As you can see from here at minus 1 we do have a maximum. Do you see that? This is minus 1, 0, square root 3 and this one is minus square root 3, correct? So we have a maximum at minus 1. So there are different ways of looking into the same question and providing reasons for the same, right? So the shortest way, of course, is you can select the point and preceding and following intervals, find rate of change using preceding and following, add them, divide by 2, you'll get 0, which I haven't used here, right? We just gave an explanation. So that is probably the most effective way, I should say, method number three is the graph and four is preceding and following interval right once you do preceding and following interval for rate of change using these values we have the values here correct then you can always add them up it will be zero that means there is maximum or minimum and since the preceding is positive, following is negative. We have a maximum at minus 1. I hope with all these methods in place, you are in a position to easily do the rest of the questions, right? So I'll close it here. I'll leave calculating all these things for you to do. But I hope you have understood the concept and that helps. Thank you and all the best.